being opposed to burying nuclear waste in the Lake District means that you're opposed to Sellafield or opposed to nuclear power. And frankly, that is nonsense. Sellafield is a very important part of the economy in this area. I would hazard a guess that more than half of the people in this room either have a friend or a member of family who works there, as do I. And the discussion tonight is about burial of nuclear waste in the Lake District. So there have been several attempts at this. We've been generating nuclear waste since the 1940s, and civil nuclear power began actually in West Cumbria in the mid-1950s. In the 70s, we, well, we basically ignored nuclear waste until the 1970s, when we set up about a sort of rather secretive campaign of looking for a site to bury nuclear waste. Uh, that failed politically, as you might imagine, for uh, you know, people ask questions when you start drilling holes in there where they live. So that was abandoned. 1980s, a proper national survey was done by NARAX, this time open and uh, rather a good survey, actually a, a good piece of work. In the late 80s and then into the 90s, NIREX focused on West Cumbria, covering an area of 65 by 60 kilometers, and then focusing in on Longlands Farm. They spent 400 million pounds investigating that area, and it failed on safety and site performance grounds. They simply couldn't adequately model and predict water flow in the area, which meant it was ruled out. So you might naturally assume that that was the end for West Cumbria, but 2003, the government start looking again for the best way to, to deal with nuclear waste, and uh, they set up a committee to do that. Uh, they looked at various options, including firing into space, drilling into subduction zones, and plate boundaries, and eventually they concluded that geological disposal, along with most other countries, was the right thing to go for. So, 2008, government white paper comes out, all about implementing geological disposal. And the first thing they did, stage one, was to invite councils to volunteer. And here is the full list of the councils that did volunteer. <laughs> Quite a number. So you might assume that they might call a halt, or they might pause the process, they might do something to stop it, whereas actually what they did was press on in the hope that some other <coughs> area would stick their hand up. So stage two, so if we move on to that, Stage two was looking at the screening report, looking at the area which was obviously unsuitable on a few basic criteria. And so they ruled out this area here, about this pink area, about 25% of the land area was ruled out on the basis of groundwater, oil and gas prospectivity, and certain minerals. Uh, you might notice this kind of V-shaped gap up here around Silith, Abbey Town, West Newton, because that gap wasn't there in the draft report. But that had appeared by the time the, the final report was released. So let's have a look at that. On the left here, we have two diagrams here and here from the draft report in Northern Allerdale. This is July 2010. On the basis of oil and gas prospectivity, that rules the area out. On the basis of uh, groundwater, this is a, a secondary B aquifer, as it's known, which means it's a you're able to get very limited water supply from it, but you can get water from it. And we know there are wells that go right down into the Mercy of Mudstone, more than 100 metres deep. But then by the time this was published, in October 2010, this gap had developed. And that gap is now one of the areas they're looking at. So there is an actual concern. I would call this a change of criteria. Um, Alan Ellis, who's going to come up here later on, has recently called this a change of interpretation of criteria. Now, I think that's good enough. So, let's have a look at the three areas, the three key areas left in play here. And these have been named by the geologist, Dr. Jeremy Dearlove, who's here as well. He's gonna to speak to us later. He's named three rock volumes as potentially suitable. And they are the Mercy Mudstone, up here in the, uh, the Solway Plain. The Eskdale granite, which is down here, and the Innerdale granite. So a closer look at these, the Eskdale granite mostly exists in the Eskdale Valley, but there is, and that's actually rather faulted, but there is this area further south, which we know uh, is, has less exposure, so we know less about. 
But today, partly because of where we're sitting, and because we believe it's the favourite, I'm going to concentrate on the Ennerdale granite here. 50 square kilometres from Netherwalsdale to the shore of Buttermere. <coughs> so the advantage of Ennerdale granite is that you can put a tunnel straight from the fields into it. About 10 kilometres will get you from one to the other for waste and placement. The difficulty though is it's an area of extreme relief. It's a, it's a very hilly place and that should rule it out on the normal criteria. But um, the BGS has uh, been quite helpful here because it produced a diagram. So this, um, this diagram, produced in 2006, showed this is a favourable environment for burying nuclear waste in a hard rock mountain and burying it beneath the hard rock mountain. That doesn't appear to conform to any international criteria that we're aware of, and it is a concern. So let's just flip that round to the tunnel entrance is from the left, and compare it with the situation in Ennerdale. If we were to go in actually from the surface of Sellafield, um, in this case we're going through a sandstone that starts across the Lake District boundary fault, a significant fault, down into the Ennerdale Valley. And there's a, little, there's a profile map here showing how it worked. So, as I said, it was published in 2006, that cartoon. We don't know what the basis for it was. When Professor Smythe asked the BGS and NERC, the governing body, um, they referred to a document three years later. And standard practice, of course, would be to refer to something that predates what you're trying to justify. <laughs> so, what this means is that Perhaps, I mean, there could be a coincidence, but there is a suggestion that the diagram was produced very much with the Lake District in mind. These are the only hard rock mountains in England, or possibly with Emmerdale in mind. So let's have a look now at the Emmerdale granite. So right now we're standing in Lowe's Water, roughly above the Kirkstall Inn, looking down in Crummock Water in the foreground. Lake Button is there. And what you can see is the northern face of Red Pike and Starling Dodd are Ennerdale granite. Actually, this is rather a thin layer of granite, which is uh, lucky for the residents of that valley, including me, um, because that makes it very unsuitable. And it's also a layered uh, piece of granite, which, again, makes it complicated and unsuitable. You'll also notice quite a lot of lines on here, these red lines. These are all faults. So it is a very unsuitable area. But let's have a look on a map. Um, and we'll just illustrate the, uh, the part that's in Allerdale, parts in Copeland. So purple is Allerdale. The line splitting the two here is the line between Allerdale and Copeland. And so this area here will be excluded from being too thin and layered. As you go further south, that gets a bit more interesting. And there are still, some, still a few faults here, but let's actually uh, move further south again. So now, here is Ennerdale water this time, partly hidden by this box. And what you can notice is that as you move south of Ennerdale water, this part of the Ennerdale granite appears to be less faulted. And that's quite significant. Um, however, we know that the northern extreme and we know the southern end are layered. And it's reasonable to assume that's probably the case in the middle, which would make this unsuitable. We have a little bit of new information as well which, it's a bit messy, but um, the red lines are faults mapped by geologists outside here. There's been an aeromagnetic survey over this area, a plane flying over, um, detecting the anomaly beneath, and what you can see within the granite are several features which will denote uh, there are specific signatures in there. And we also know that radiometrics, when you look at it, the natural gamma ray emitters within it, you can tell that it's not a uniform body. That tells us this is not a homogeneous lump, it's going to be complicated, either unsuitable or difficult to explore. You're essentially going to need to drill a lot of holes because you're not looking at a uniform mass. Secondly, we know that the total magnetic field, um, the end of granite is about here, by the way, this is stellar field, the white area, and the fact that we can't see any suppression of the magnetic field in the end of our granite area, what you're looking at is the 
the magnetism from the Borodale volcanics beneath, that's what's generating the anomaly, that suggests to us that it's actually quite a thin piece of granite. So if that's the case, then uh, it's clearly unsuitable. So what does stage five mean? Stage five is the surface investigations. It would have to take place in the park. We're actually about to go into stage four in January. 